Right, I've flipped a coin 10 times and these are my results. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six heads and I've got one, two, three, four tails. Now that's good, I know that adds up to 10. Now, if I was to flip it again, what could I expect to happen? Now, if you look at a coin without just forgetting what's happened before, I've got two sides, haven't I? I've got heads or tails. And so this would be the theoretical probability, so what I think should happen based on what I know about a coin. And the probability of getting a head on the next row would be a half, okay? Because one, there's one head out of two sides altogether. So that is known as the theoretical, all right? And you might see this in a, te in a test or exam paper, theoretical probability. Now, I could also look at it as relative frequency and, and therefore experimental probability. Now, that's looking at what's happened previously. Now, what happened previously, actually, is I got six heads, okay, out of 10 flips, didn't I? And so this is experimental probability. And that's where I look at what's happened before with that coin, and then from those, from those results, I work out what's gonna happen next. Theoretical probability is I forget what's happened before, it really doesn't matter, okay? I know that one, one side of the coin is gonna be heads, and there are two sides altogether. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.